Easter worship at Northfield United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rachel McIver Mori. Welcome everyone here, regulars, guests, whatever you are in between. It's a joy to have each and every one of you for our Resurrection Day celebration. We do have a few announcements before we get going this morning. First of all, a big welcome to everyone here and online, waving at you on the camera. It's good to have you with us. Welcome. I want to say a big, big thank you to our visuals team. Don't they do a spectacular job? Spectacular job. In addition to our visuals team, I want to say a thank you to everybody who purchased Easter flowers in memory or in honor of a loved one. Uh, this is a way we get to celebrate the great communion of saints when we come on Easter morning, and it is an immense gift that you offer. After worship today, we do have an Easter brunch, and you are all invited. It's free will donation. All proceeds go to our youth programming. So you are invited, and I bet it's going to be spectacular because I know the people in charge, and they don't know how not to be spectacular. So you are all invited to Easter brunch immediately following worship. If you're not familiar with our building, you'll exit through the sanctuary doors. You'll take an immediate right, and then take a left. And if you're having trouble, follow the crowd or your nose, either one. Either one will get you where you need to go. Uh, this week, I want you to be aware that this is a week where I will start being around less, but don't worry, we'll make sure our bases are covered on Sundays and Wednesdays and beyond. And I also just want to make you all aware, uh, make sure you are checking your weekly emails for any news around funerals or deaths in the congregation. We have had a few in this last week. And we put our information there around funerals because we don't always have a Sunday in between to make announcements, but that way you can always have the information. So I invite your attention to that. And if you are not on our email list, you can call our church office so that you can get subscribed and get that information. This coming week, I want you to be aware that uh, Super Wednesday is back after our spring break. So good news. I bring you great joy, uh, good news of great joy, which is for all the people. You don't have to cook on Wednesday nights. Yay. Hallelujah. It's good news. It is good news. And uh, with all that said, friends, I'm going to invite you to stand, pass the peace of Christ, and say hello to somebody you've never seen before. All righty, start finding your way back, please. Start finding your way back. Some of you were saying hello to people you already knew. I saw that. I saw that. Not okay. Please remain standing for our call to worship that you'll find printed in your bulletin or on the screen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He lives. Alleluia. Alleluia. Join me in our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Today's prayers are adapted from the reworship blog and Ministry Matters, and they start with a call and response. I will say, Christ is risen, and invite you to say, He is risen indeed. And I say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. We repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy, Lord, again and again for news of your victory over powers of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us every day. Beyond our comprehension, you startle us again and again with resurrection life, bringing grace and hope and joy you, in your risen power, are shaping all our days. And so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, O oh, gracious and patient God, we come before you now with so many things from the weak which can weigh us down. We would like an easy faith one that doesn't cause us to look within ourselves, to identify those many ways that we have forsaken you. But faith is never easy. Faith is never easy. It requires our very souls. Forgive us, God, for all those things which we have neglected to do that would have helped someone else be closer to you. Heal our hearts from the wounds which have been inflicted upon us by the anger and misunderstandings which occur in relationships. Prepare our lives, Lord, to be of service to you. In silence, we wait. We long for your presence and your healing touch in our lives in the lives of those we love, in the world. Lord, in this silence, hear our prayers and be with us. And hear these words of assurance. God is merciful. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Feel the healing, loving power of God in your lives. For it is given to you through Jesus Christ. Feel the healing, loving power of God and exercise the healing, loving power that God has given to you as we pray as Christ taught us to do, as we join now together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture this morning is from Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, 
when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone? For some of us from the entrance to the tomb. And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him, just as he told you. So they went, and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. <clears throat> and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Thank you, Bev. I'd like to invite the kids to come forward. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Who do I have this morning? Who do I have this morning? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. All right. Have a seat, guys. Have a seat. Have a seat. Hello. 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 It's good to see you all. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Come on up. You want to have a seat for me, buds? Thank you. Huh? You are 10? Fantastic. Love it. Aaliyah, Lincoln, there we go. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. All right. Anybody else? All right. The number matters here in a minute. So, guys, tell me what today is. Easter. Easter. Tell me what happens on Easter. Oh, you, Easter Bunny comes and gives out eggs. What else happens? Yep, so we celebrate the resurrection and the empty tomb, right? Heron, what were you going to say, buds? Jesus was resurrected. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you how the earliest church celebrated that, and then we're going to do something kind of similar. So here's what I want you to imagine, guys. Imagine that we are the earliest church there is, 2,000 years ago, okay? Where's your cane? <laughs> oh, child. All right, so... The earliest church, they would have gathered first on Thursday. What is today? Sunday. They would have gathered first on Thursday to celebrate the Lord's Supper. They would have had communion where we have bread and juice together. But they would have stayed together fasting and praying all through Good Friday when we remember what Jesus did on the cross. And all the way through Saturday, they would have been fasting. Do you know what fasting means? Not eating, that's correct. All through Saturday. And then they would have gathered together on Saturday night after sundown. They would have started a bonfire, and they would have started uh, praying and singing together. And then at the stroke of midnight, do you know what they did? At the stroke of midnight, they would start singing hallelujah, and they would have things to make loud noises, and that would be so much big sound and song. And then they would eat. Exactly what you said. So, is it midnight? No. no, it's not midnight. But I do have some things to make a little bit of noise. What do you think, guys? Baritones. None of them are baritones, Heron. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. It's going to be midnight on Easter, because I said. All right, so we have some noisemakers here. I'm going to show you how to use each one. I have a maraca which you shake. Who wants to shake a maraca? You want to shake a maraca? You two want to shake maracas? That's just fine. I've got a tambourine. Who wants to shake a tambourine? Like that. All right. I've got some sticks that you can hit together. You want to do sticks, Heron? All right, there we go. Um, I've got another tambourine. If somebody else wants a tambourine, you can take that. There we go. Then I have this lovely bell that you can hit like that. Lincoln wants the bell. Lincoln, all right. So you hold it like that and make sure you don't hold on to the bell, hold on to that part itself. And then I have my cowbell. Henry, do you want my cowbell? You want my cowbell? All right, now hold your sounds just a second. Hold them. Okay, so you hear that? So hold that for me while I'm talking. All right, now, folks, 
with hearing devices. <laughs> Folks with hearing devices, this is your warning. Turn them down. All right, we're gonna do a countdown and it's gonna be midnight on Easter morning and I want you to make the biggest sound. And congregation, you figure out what so sound you wanna make. It's Easter, okay? I know, we have enough though. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Good job. All right, let's pray, and then I want you to put your instruments back in the basket. God, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for music. We thank you for life. Amen. All right, you can go with Mr. Gregory to Children's Church. That's hilarious. All right, folks. All right, please stand as we sing our hymn of the day. On July 7th, 2003, NASA launched the Opportunity rover to Mars. It was launched with its twin, the Spirit rover, and it landed on January 24th, 2004. Now, both of these were watched by the world, but it was the Opportunity rover which really captured people's experience and really captured people's attention. And there's all sorts of great reasons for why this is true. The Opportunity rover landed on a part of Mars where they suspected there might be evidence of water, of what could sustain life. 
And when it landed, that's exactly what it found. It found rock formations that were consistent with the presence of liquid water, the first evidence that at one time there might have been life on Mars. Absolutely stunning discovery straight out of the chute for the Opportunity rover. But it didn't stop there. It kept going. And in fact, it exceeded its expected lifespan by 60 times. And it would travel over the equivalent of a marathon during its exploration of Mars. And because it, the mission lasted so long, the engineers at NASA gained some affection for their little rover, and they nicknamed the Opportunity rover Oppie. Oppie. And so they learned so much through the work of the Opportunity rover, but in July of 2018, there was a planet-wide dust storm over the surface of Mars, massive cataclysmic climate event. And they had seen this coming, so they tried to tuck in little Oppie under a rock before the storm came, but the storm was so vicious, so violent, that there was no saving the Opportunity rover. But you know what? For eight months, they tried. They tried to revive Oppie. And during this eight months, to keep the spirits up of the engineers, they developed a playlist that they would play in uh, morning here on Earth for the engineers when they came into the office to keep working on Oppie. Now, you can still find the Oppie Wake Up playlist on Spotify. You can still find it. And it, t it, it contains some songs you might expect for something like this. Uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham. I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, Life on Mars, David Bowie, my favorite, Dust in the Wind by Kansas. <laughs> Come on now. And uh, Tom Petty, I Won't Back Down. So it's kind of a good playlist. <laughs> it's not bad. And so they would play the songs from the Oppie Wake Up playlist to keep their own spirits up, but they would broadcast it to the Opportunity rover on Mars while they did so. Well, the last transmission that they got from Oppie was a data stream which indicated that its batteries were low. This was a solar-powered instrument, and it wasn't in a position where it could get more light from the sun. And uh, that the, it, the, it was on the wrong side of the planet. It was getting dark. Now, a reporter reported on this and uh, rendered the data stream as, my battery is low and it's getting dark. And that spread all across the world that the Opportunity rover had sent back this message. And I promise you that no you know, radio-controlled car is sitting on another planet writing Ken Burns-style prose back to engineers on Earth. My dearest NASA, <laughs> it grows dark. I fear I not, shall not see the morn. Yours always, opportunity. That's not how it works. That, but the data stream indicated that the battery couldn't recover, and it was on the wrong side of this planet. On February 13th, 2019, NASA declared the Opportunity rover mission finished. But that morning, they played one last song for Oppie. And it was I'll Be Seeing You by Billie Holiday. And Billie Holiday, as she sings this number, maybe you know the last verse and maybe you don't. I'll see you in the morning and when the night is new I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. The grief of the women that Easter morning, they brought incense, they brought frankincense, they brought the, the myrrh to anoint Jesus' dead body. And really, 
what brought my eyes forward in this uh, Easter morning was the grief of the women, the loss. And I was thinking about the grief of the women because really bringing all of these good-smelling oils and ointments and herbs to a dead body is, in real talk, just as useful as sending a song to a radio car on Mars. It didn't do anything. Oppie was gone. Jesus was dead. This outpouring of grief, what did it do? What's its utility? And the truth is, there really isn't. That's the thing with grief. It's not a useful thing. It's love that has nowhere to go. And so we offer these gestures as best we can. The other reason I was thinking about this grief for this morning was because when we talk about the death of Jesus, for a reference point, we often say, think of someone you love who has died. And there's not a person in this room who hasn't been touched by grief. Not a one. But what the women were grieving was not just the loss of someone they loved, as deep and profound and traumatic as that is. What Jesus had been to them was the one who communicated about this other world where life was possible. Jesus had communicated to them about a kingdom of God where the last are first and the first are last, where the poor are fed and the rich are sent away empty, where Jesus eats and drinks with sinners because it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus proclaimed a world where life was possible, life big, life abundant, life that could be healed from its illness, life that could be uh, exercised of its demons. Jesus proclaimed a world that now seemed forever lost to these women because the transmission had ended. So what they were grieving was this person that they loved and loved intimately, but also the loss of this connection to this other world that he had proclaimed, that he had brought near to them in a way that no one else ever had or ever could. And they poured out their grief into myrrh and incense and ointment that they could bring to the tomb to pour on Jesus' body. Beyond grief, the other emotion that dominates Mark's telling of the resurrection story is fear. It's fear. When they arrive, they see the stone rolled away and somebody sitting inside who is clearly not Jesus, and that someone inside says, he's not here, and, and that someone inside says, go tell the others. And it says they feel anxious and terrified and afraid. And then they went back the way they came because they were afraid. Fear dominates the second half of this passage, just as grief is the dominant emotion in the first half. Fear is what dominates the second. And I love that it does. Let me tell you why. We have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Bible. There are only two stories about the life of Jesus which are contained in all four Gospels. This is your free lesson for the day. You're all welcome. The two stories that you will find in each Gospel is the death and resurrection of Jesus and the feeding of the 5,000. Those are the only two stories which are consistently in all four Gospels. In the other Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and John, we see a different response after the initial encounter at the empty tomb. 
there's some initial anxiety and fear, but the, the initial encounterers do go out and tell the others. And in the Gospel of Matthew, that moves straight into the Great Commission. In the Gospel of Luke, that moves straight into the road to Emmaus. In the Gospel of John, that moves straight into the encounter of Jesus with doubting Thomas, where he extends his hands and says, See, put your fingers in the wounds. I'm here. Beautiful stories, but I don't understand them the way I do Mark. Because the way the women responded in Mark seems eminently rational to have encountered an empty tomb and to walk away unwilling to say anything about it. Yes, I get you. <laughs> you make sense to me. And it says they went away afraid. Now, in some of your Bibles, there is some text that follows verse 8 in the Gospel of Mark, but that was added later. Our earliest texts of the Gospel of Mark end at verse 8. They end at verse 8 with the fear of the women. And the fear of the women stops the story cold. To help us understand what this means and what this looks like, I want to tell a different story. We're going to move from radio-controlled cars on Mars to circus bears. Stay with me. Stay with me. In 2021, a video started circulating in various social media sites online of a bear. And this bear is obviously in a broad space. You can't see any fences around it. But you see this bear tracing a path 10 by 10. And you can see the path worn under its feet. And it just keeps pacing around and around in this 10 by 10 square. And as with all videos online, we should bring a healthy sense of skepticism. But a reporter from Yahoo News did call the, uh, the um, poster to trace back where the origin of this video was, and it ended up being a true story. And this bear's name was Ina, and Ina had for years, from, cap from uh, birth, she had been raised as a captive bear, and kept in this tiny little cage under all the conditions you might suspect for something like that, for a Romanian uh, roadside zoo attraction. And through a lawsuit, Ina and other animals as, par as part of this attraction were freed. And they found a place for Ina in this uh, wilderness sanctuary for bears in Romania. And uh, there was another bear that was her sister that was also freed. And when she went into the sanctuary, she shuffled off in and she was uh, doing all the things you would hope a bear would do once finding freedom. But not Ina. Ina stepped into this sanctuary where there were no fences in sight, and she started pacing the same square, the same size she had been in while she was in captivity. Ten feet, turn left. Ten feet, turn left. Ten feet, turn left. All day, every day. Ten feet, turn left. For six months, Ina traced the same path. And I find the women in Ina. I find them in Ina. This new world that they thought had been lost to them now had come very near. This world where the first shall be last, the last shall be first, the rich shall be sent away empty, and life wins over death has now come near. It's right there for them. But they are scared. They've been living in a cage. And so they do what they have always done. They trace the same path. Ten feet, turn left. Ten feet, turn left. Ten feet, turn left. They don't tell anyone what they saw. That's how the story ends. So let's offer some compassion to these women, can we? Can we offer some compassion to them for their terror, living under a cruel empire, with the ire of their own religious el elites after them, they're terrified. This is scary stuff. We don't need to offer any judgment to these women. They've had enough. They've had enough. But something happened. Something happened. 
And I'll use Ina's story as a way to talk about what happened. Ina traced her path in this brave new world. She kept hers small, something she could understand, living inside of this stereotyped behavior. It's actually got a name. It's called zoocosis when animals develop this sort of uh, behavior. And the rehabilitators at the wilderness uh, preserve said, what can we do to help Ina? She's not, she's not finding her way to freedom. She's not finding her way off the path. She's not finding her way out of this behavior. How do we help her? And do you know what they did? They rolled a stone into her path. They rolled a stone onto the path. And she encountered the stone, and she couldn't go the way she had always gone, so she had to step around the stone, which she did, and then kept going a little bit. But the rehabilitators saw that what she had done, and they put that stone there, and then they rolled another one next to it. And then they rolled another one next to it. And they led Ina, rolled stone by rolled stone, off of her path and into the world. And after a few weeks of this, Ina wasn't on her path anymore. Ina wasn't pacing the same circle she had been pacing for the, her entire life. Ina was living in full freedom. I tell that story because Ina's story is the story of our women, and how do I know that? The story that we have, the text ends with the women afraid. But I don't know if you know this, but we read the story this morning. At some point, they told somebody. At some point, that fear which gripped them, very understandably, at some point there was a boulder rolled into their path and they stepped off. And they told the story. And I wonder how timid the first time was. And then they told it again, and again, and again. And the Gospel of Mark is the earliest account we have of the life of Jesus. Without the Gospel of Mark, we don't have the Gospel of Matthew, and we don't have the Gospel of Luke. Both borrow heavily from the Gospel of Mark. At some point, something stopped the women from the path of fear that they had been tracing. And they stepped out into the world, this world that had been proclaimed to them, the world they thought they had lost with Jesus and his death. And they told their story. And they told their story enough and enough and enough to where today in your pews and in many of your homes, you have a copy of this story. They stepped off the path. We don't know how, we don't know when, and we don't know why. We don't know what stone got rolled into their path, amen? All we know is that it did. That's all we know. The grief and the fear in this telling of the resurrection story, man, is there anything more relatable than human grief and paralyzing fear? I get it. Is there anything more relatable than that? But the truth is, did you know that Mars is still out there? It is. It didn't go away when Oppie started tra tr stopped transmitting data. And in fact, there's two more Mars rovers in uh, production today, one called Endurance, the other called Perseverance, the name of the valley from which Oppy transmitted the last stream of data. It's still out there, ready to be explored, ready to be dug into and to see what's here, what's the mineral content of this soil, where else mi where might there have been or be water. We don't know. We got to explore to find out. And the kingdom of God is proclaimed in Jesus Christ we got to explore it. We have to step off of the path that we've been walking if we want to see the last be first and the first be last. If we want to see the rich sent away empty and the hungry fed. If we want to see Jesus eat and drink with sinners again. 
because it's not the healthy who need a doctor, it is the sick. If we want to see demons cast out, if we want to see healing, we need to step off of our path. And I don't say this for shame on anybody any more than I shame Ina the bear or I shame those early women disciples. No, thank you. Don't need that. But when the rock gets rolled into our path, we have a choice. We can stop cold, or we can step off and into this brave, wide world that has been given to us. And if Ina the bear can do it, maybe it's high time for us too. Amen. As we come to our time of offering and prepare our hearts for what Bob is about to play, we lift up a ministry of this church whenever we gather for moments like this. And so this morning, I do want to lift up the good work of our visuals and arts team, the folks who put the flags out, the folks who put these up here, who curate what we have around the church so that everything and every space proclaims the good news of the kingdom of God. Amen. Join me in the offering liturgy printed in your bulletin or on the screen. All that we have is a gift, and we are grateful recipients of God's abundance. All right, folks, it's time. One of the traditions of this congregation is to close out Easter worship with the Hallelujah Chorus. And who's the choir? Trick question. We all are. But our choir, our NUMC choir, will help lead us. If you would like to uh, join our NUMC choir, we, uh, uh, Debbie, we have some copies over there, do we? Okay, I'm seeing Claire nod for me. Thank you, Debbie Ray. Appreciate you. Um, and so you are welcome to join over there. We also have it on PowerPoint. Now, sometimes PowerPoint, you can, have you ever had this experience where electronics don't do what you ask them to do when you ask them to do it? Have you ever had that experience? No, just me? Okay, getting some nodding notes. So it will be up, and we'll, we'll keep up as best we can. Uh, but if you would like a paper copy, you are welcome to, uh, when we stand up, to go join our choir with a paper copy. So please stand, and let's do this.
find yourself this Easter morning, whether you have been pacing the same path for a very, very, very long time, and you just don't know how to step off. You might be in a position to roll a boulder into someone else's path and help them find their way into freedom. I don't know where you find yourself, but I know where God finds you, and that is exactly where you are, offering grace, mercy, and life beyond all knowing. Live it, love it, share it, in the name of the Christ. Amen.
I knew you were here, you could have turned around.